Welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Review TV. I'm Eli Fortune. And I'm Osmond Shire. On today's show, we will be discussing student elections along with the Trump administration. We'll also talk about our very own Buffalo State graduate, Lazarus Lynch. Stay tuned. Now, from the campus of SUNY Buffalo State, news and information for Buffalo and the surrounding communities, it's the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. From March 27th to March 30th, Buffalo State students voted for the annual student elections. They were held in the lower level of the Campbell Student Union, near the bookstore for the 2017-2018 school year. Our very own Monique Maxwell was elected to become our new USG president. Our very own Nikita Singh will become the new USG executive vice president, while Savannah Morgan was elected to the, become the new USG treasurer. Thank you, Buffalo State students, for voting, and congratulations to the rest of the winners. The Buffalo State Criminal Justice Department will be offering a program about public safety and the Trump administration. The event will be next Tuesday, April 11th, and it will run from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The teaching will focus on the components of process restoring communities, safety acts, which will focus on reducing drug and violent crimes. Topics to be discussed in the session include sending the feds, which is President Trump's solution to Chicago's homicide rate. The event will be located in classroom building B220. For more information, you can contact our very, you can contact Laurel Bona at 716-878-5037. Registration for the summer and fall courses began this past Wednesday, April 5th at 6 a.m. It is advised at the registrar's office to have your classes chosen in advance to so avoid being waitlisted or possibly not getting into the course. If you are unaware of the time and day you have to register, you can log on to Banner, go under the student, go under student and select registration status. Your status is based on the amount of credits you've, um, credit hours you've earned. Buffalo State will be hosting an event titled Take Back the Night, which is meant to be an uplifting experience that gives power back to victims of abuse and domestic violence. The event consists of survivor stories, poetry readings, guest speakers, songs, dancing, and much more. Community and campus organizations will be present to support the cause and provide resources and help raise awareness of sexual assault. The theme this year is clothing is not consent. Prior to the event, there will be a window painting contest with resident life and t-shirt decorating contests as well. The event takes place April 10th at 6 p.m. in honor of the month of April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Lazarus Lynch, a Buffalo State alumni, appeared on NBC's CHOP March 28th, winning the preliminary round in a total of $10,000. Lynch has been known in the Buffalo State community for his popular cooking segments, appearing on Taste Made, a cooking YouTube channel. Lynch will move on to the final round to potentially win $50,000. The episode will air on April 28th. The Buffalo State's women lacrosse team traveled to Fredonia this past Tuesday to take on the Blue Devil in the Battle of Lake Matchup. The Bengals trailed Fredonia in the first half 7-5, but came back by outscoring. Their opponents in the second half 9-3, the Bengals went on to win by a final score of 14-10. Junior attacker Alana Hearn led the way in scoring with six goals and also dished out three assists, while sophomore attacker Morgan Doug picked up two goals and one assist. The team is now 4-4 four and four on the season and is 1-0 and oh in the SUNY Yacht Conference play. Buffalo State will take on St. John's, John's Fisher College next Thursday at Coyer Field. Game time starts at 5 p.m. This past Monday, Professor Ken Stone led a discussion on President Trump's economic plan. Reporter Terrence Young has more on the story. This past Monday, the series of <laughs> President Trump's fiscal policy teachings was held in classroom building B220, right here on Buffalo State's campus. It was taught by Professor Kenneth Stone, who had this to say about the event. Uh, this is one in a series of discussions sponsored by the Public Administration the Division, the Political Science Department, on the first 100 days of the Trump administration, uh, focusing on various topics throughout the uh, course of this month and uh, uh, in the in, in, uh, late April, early May. Uh, this tonight's topic is on uh, 
fiscal policy, and we'll be talking about the proposals that Mr. Trump has offered to the extent that they've been offered, uh, and how they would affect uh, economic uh, conditions, uh, tax policy, and spending policy. The, one of the problems uh, in dealing with fiscal issues is it takes a while to explain them, uh, and that, that people, uh, if they don't, if they don't uh, understand it well enough to make an important decision, sometimes we may not make very, very good choices. So uh, it's hopefully to raise their awareness, perhaps raise their uh, uh, BS detector, because there's a lot of conflicting things that are out there, uh, uh, and be, being able better s to sift through that and, and uh, really get an idea of where things are headed. Students were able to come in and learn more about the proposed budget on education and how it would affect them and their peers. For more information about the event and upcoming discussions, go to the Buff State website. For the Buffer Review, this is Terrence Young. The Criminal Justice Department will be hosting a program based on President Trump and the immigration from April 24th in classroom building B228. It will be held by Dr. Lorraine Baono who will focus on President Trump and his immigration proposals, including the wall in Mexico. The discussion will be focused on the construction and funding of the wall that will be established two-year minimum federal prison sentence for deportees who enter the U.S. as convicted felons. The Fashion Student Association held their annual spring fashion show on Sunday, April 2nd in the social hall. The show was held from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. This year's theme was avant-garde, which included the student body to come dressed up with the most unique and different styles of fashion. This was also FSA's 30th anniversary, in which the show was dedicated to. Tonight at 6.30 p.m., the Newman Center will be hosting their weekly Thursday night dinners. The event is free to Buffalo State students, and you can enjoy a home-cooked meal that will be provided by members of the permanent community. You can also play a game on a pool or watch TV and relax with friends. The Newman Center is a Catholic campus ministry here at Buffalo State, and they provide this to students that want to take a load off from their school work. If students would like to attend the building, it will, it will be located at 1219 Elmwood Ave. The Newman Center will also celebrate their first Friday Mass tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. The Mass is open to everyone and is located on 1219 Elmwood Avenue. Their goal is to give Buffalo State students the opportunity to give thanks and praise for a fresh new month. They will also provide students new outlooks and perspectives on life. Reverend Patrick Zengarski will be hosting and facilitating while guests are welcome to stay for refreshments and connect with new people or familiar faces. For more information, call 716-882-1080. Buffalo State will be hosting their annual Spring Open House on Saturday, April 8th at 9 p.m. to 1 p.m. The potential students and their families will have the opportunity to explore campus to see what the school has to offer. This will also give organizations the ability to promote their clubs and tell students how to balance extracurriculars and academia. The academic department has also set tours and activities for these students to get a better understanding of the institution so that they can consider Buffalo State as an option for college. The month of March is known as Women's History Month. And this past Friday, on March 31st, the Student Life Department held a Women's Leadership Conference right here at Buffalo State. Here is Monique Maxwell with more on the story. The Student Life Office presented their annual Women's Leadership Conference this past Friday, March 31st, entitled Be Bold. The conference had several speakers, including a keynote speaker, an undergraduate, Giannina Kajejas, who is a senior here at Buffalo State. About The Women's Leadership Conference is all about bringing women together to talk about the current stigma behind women, how we can work together to become the leaders for tomorrow. It's very important for us as women to learn about our current nature, what's going on in our community, who we are, and what we can do to continue breaking that stigma and being the leaders that we want to be, being part of a CEO um, 
just taking a role that women usually do not take. Some of the presentations were entitled The Transformational Power of Women, The Balancing Act, and even Empowering Your Words, which was presented by Bianca McGraw, a complex director that works for Residence Life. My presentation is about using your words to empower. Um, and I plan to do an activity using poetry to kind of get that out um, of the individuals because I think our voice is very important. And so many times that women are silenced um, from their words or we have to repeat things several times uh, to our male counterparts to really be heard. And it's not until a male counterpart may say something, oh, now everyone gets it. Um, and so that could be kind of a frustration and a struggle. Um, and so I really think empowerment is really key. Um, for women to really not only empower themselves but each other and work as a group, um, not to push each other down, but really to build each other up. Great. And thank you so much, Bianca. This is Monique with the Buffalo Review. We will take a quick break, but when we come back, we will have reporter Zach Hux take, talking about sexual assault workshops that will be taking place next week. This is the Buffalo State Review TV. Three, two, one, cue them, take camera two. You're watching the Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. You can find out more about our show at our website, thebuffalorevue.wordpress.com, and we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Buffalo Review. I'm Zachary Huck. Joining me here today are two peer educators involved with the Sexual Assault Awareness Workshop held here on campus, April 13th in the Bacon Hall. This month is April, is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, with hope of educating men and women the difference between healthy and unhealthy relationships. So we have Kirsten here, and we have Nazim. And uh, just a little bit to tell us here, what does it mean to be a peer educator, and how do you guys uh, come, like, be involved and become one? Peer, ed peer educators don't have to be perfect. Uh, we all have our flaws, but one thing that we do is educate others about the dangers of a lot of things like tobacco, and we provide information about sexual assault, general health information regarding STIs, um, sexual, trans sexual transmitted diseases, and we provide support for people who want to be healthy. And to you, what does it mean to be like a peer educator? Uh, I think it's really important, like what we do, because uh, we spread awareness about things that people may not really want to think about or may not be aware about. And um, like, you know, it's sometimes people don't really know where to go to get the information. So we, we have that information and we're like really passionate about sharing what we know. So I think it's really important and I've, I love doing it. Awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month consists of and what are its goals in order to educate the students and everything about sexual assault awareness? It's important to know that sexual assault can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter about the age or race or anything like that. Um, it's, it's important to spread awareness, especially for people who, don't, who have been sexually assaulted and don't want to talk about it. And just supporting them uh, providing information that they have the support here at Buff State. And it's really important to know, um, it's important to know all, all, the, of, all the information, how, how to prevent it, and stuff like that. Yeah, um, we do a lot of work with that, especially this month, because it is the Awareness Month. And um, so we ha we've had like a couple workshops. Like today, we had a brief history of sexual assault. And um, later in the month, on the 13th, we'll have um, like Sexual Assault 101 with Crisis Services. Um, we do a lot of promotion, like when we're tabling with flyers um, about like events we have that are meant to um, provide like education for both, um, you know, like perpetrators, victims, allies, just so like, you know, because like anyone can be affected, like whether it's the friend of a victim or the victim, her, him or herself. So we do a lot of work with that, um, especially with Tape Back the Night. It's very important um, to our agency because in college it tends to be like a higher number of sexual assault cases. So it's a very important topic that we awesome. work on. Oh, uh, you said you just had an event. Could you talk a little bit more about that, about the history? Yeah, um, it's, it was a brief history of sexual assault. Um, I, I wasn't able to attend, but um, 
it is very important to understand the history of sexual assault and know that this isn't like a new issue. This is something that has been around for a long time. And that's why it can be challenging because, you know, it feels really hopeless. Like, well, what can you do if it's been around forever? But, you know, knowing the history of a topic is important to know how to maybe work on, you know, the future and how to prevent it, you know. So, um, you know, because of what we know about the history, we may maybe like know more about how to help in the future, you know. Awesome. Uh, and then you guys are holding a workshop here on campus, the 13th. Could you guys talk a little bit about that, what will be going on during it? Yeah, um, it's Sexual Assault 101 with Crisis Services, and um, we work, do, we do a lot of work with Crisis Services. They're like, um, we have like a, I think we have like a representative, I'm not sure of her name, but like she's tied to our agency, and like um, she's like there for like anyone to contact if they need her, like they're, they're a really important organization, and they'll just come and provide information, you know, about sexual assault. Um, you know, for like what happened, what you can do if you have experienced a sexual assault, what you can do if um, you know you know someone who has had this problem, um, just, you know, a lot of information on it. How to support them too, yeah, because yeah. usually when sexual assault happens, it's known to be not some stranger that's hiding behind the bushes, like that. what we see in the movies. It's usually somebody that knows you well, they know your weaknesses and... It's unfortunate that it's happening, but not a lot of people put light on it. They just don't want to talk about it either because they're scared of the person. Mm -hmm. they, they're scared. Sometimes they're using substances while they're being abused, and they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to be involved with the police. And even somebody who has witnessed a situation like that, they don't want to be involved in it, or they just don't know how to do anything about it. You think? Yeah, like really the importance of speaking up when it happens to you and how really scary that can be and everything involved with it. Yeah, because yeah, nothing's going to happen unless yeah, they bring it up yeah. and you're mm -hmm. in touch with someone. Yeah, you can't like, you know, break this issue unless you have a lot of people speaking up about it, which is difficult because like, you know, when you experience that, that's something really personal that's been violated and it can really impact your life. So it's really important, this workshop. I really encourage people to go to it. How do people get in touch that have been affected by sexual assault? And what is there a service like on campus or like a hotline for them to contact? Um, we have the counseling service. We have the counseling center, which is in Porter mm -hmm. upstairs. Um, they can. They, it's paid by the student fee, mm -hmm. and they can contact somebody over there. There's a specialist mm -hmm. that can do it. And they can actually also come to our office in like the lower Porter Hall, Weigel Health Promotions office, mm -hmm. um, because we do our our supervisor Paula Madrigal. She has the ability to like link anyone with services. Mm -hmm. Like you know, we have like in, information. We have like numbers and pamphlets that, you know, if you know someone or you are someone, you know, we have, you know the ability to and provide you with numbers at least. Most importantly to contact UPD as soon as possible mm -hmm. so yeah. they can get tested then yeah. for DNA purposes. So there's so many resources available that yeah. no one should have to hide anything like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They should feel welcome and be able to talk about this with anyone. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, during these workshops, uh, what are your guys' roles during the workshops personally? Or um, like your supervisor, Paula, like you said, what would be her role during the workshops? Um, Paula does a lot of great work. She is, um, she kind of makes sure, like, she sets them up, makes sure they, makes sure they happen. But the peer educators, we, we do a lot of work with, like, you know, helping set up. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we, we uh, facilitate a workshop, you know, like, we'll do on other topics, like stress management, or we'll assist, uh, we'll assist a speaker with anything they need. Um, we like to, like, you know, attend to see how the attendance is. Um, mm -hmm help uh, promote like you know the ability to become a volunteer or an intern if you need to. Mm -hmm. um. And uh, professors usually sometimes they contact us and they request a workshop. Uh, they can do it online at the uh, Wigo Health Promotions uh, website and we can be available whenever they, they need us. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys get involved with the program and how long have you been involved with it? I have been involved for two semesters. Last mm -hmm. semester I was a intern I'm a psychology major, which is like not related to the health, health, uh, health and wellness. But uh, this semester, I'm I'm working, mm -hmm. and it's very it's very fun because I met a lot of people over there that don't they're not close to my major, but I've learned a lot from them. Mm -hmm. Same question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a social work major, so as part of the requirements for social work, you have to do a field placement. 
Um, so I chose to do it at um, Wago Health Promotions because I really feel like it's really important. Like I, I really feel like promoting and like understanding and prevention of these issues is like really important to me personally. So I, I, I'm still doing my internship. I got started last fall. This is like part two, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's been great. Like I've met like so many people, like marketing majors, communication majors, health and wellness, psychology. And it's a great place to be able to like interact with people that you never would have been able to interact with before and do work that you feel is like personally empowering and maybe help other people along the way if you need to. Cool. And then you touched a little bit on about how it has affected you. Could you go a little bit more in depth how like just being in this program has like affected both of you guys, like being in this program and trying to help other people? Yeah, um, well, I, I usually, before this internship, I was really not the kind of person to get involved with a lot of issues, and I was like, you know, kind of privately supporting them. But like once I got here, I kind of like found my voice, I guess, and like, mm -hmm. I was able to like, it was a real confidence booster, and I really kind of understood the importance of like how one voice speaking out against an issue can really make an impact, and um, like I really love it. And it's been you know because you know you have friends in your life who like everyone has problems you know across the board. You never know what people's problems are going to be, and you know with Wago Health Promotions, like you have the ability to like promote awareness of these issues and maybe help people you never would have helped before. Awesome. And then uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to take a short break here at the Buffalo Review. Stay tuned for our next seg segment featuring Ashley Steele. This is the Buffalo Review TV. Three, two, one, cue them, take camera two. You're watching the Buffalo Review TV produced by Stripes Media. You can find out more about our show at our website, thebuffalorevue.wordpress.com, and we welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com. Hello, and welcome back to the Buffalo Review TV. I'm Ashley Steele. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Simona and Samaj James for talking about Miss Fat's beauty pageant. So thank you guys so much for coming. You know, it's an honor. So Samaj, I know you're head of BAM, so can you just tell me about that organization on campus? Um, so I'm the president of Black Active Minds, and that's mm -hmm. what BAM stands for. And we are basically an organization on campus that talks about um, the empowerment for people of color. Mm -hmm. And we have programs and um, events that focus on different aspects of how we can um, help the, our brothers and sisters out in the world and on campus as well. So I know this Sunday is Miss Fat. So uh, where is it exactly? So this Sunday, Miss Fat will be in Rockwell Hall mm -hmm. at... 6 p.m. and the tickets are now on sale in Rockwell as well. And they're not sold out yet. People can still get tickets. Yeah, you can get tickets the day of too. That's awesome. So, Simone, I know you were Miss Pass Miss Fat for 2016. So, like, uh, how did you join the pageant and how did it feel like winning? Um, so I was always a BAM member and mm -hmm. I always knew that they had the pageant and a lot of their eboard members last year were like asking me to do it and mm -hmm. first I was like no. <laughs> I'm okay, I don't really want to be on stage, and mm -hmm. I was just like, well, why not do it? So, yeah, I just, like, went to the tryouts and stuff, and then they chose me to be on it, so I just did it. <laughs> and then how did it feel winning? Um, it was pretty cool. Like, I wasn't really doing it to win at first. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted to do it to, like, do something. Right. So when I won, it was just, like, really exciting and just liberating. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm doing something for a cause, but it's a pageant. <laughs> So, like, I don't know, it was just really cool. I mean, I know most of our pageants on campus are for, like, a social aspect, but I feel like this has a good, like, societal right. representation feel to it. So, like, why do you feel like pageants like these should be on every campus and should matter? They absolutely should because it's like we have, there's so many people that have problems in mm -hmm. life and, you know, being plus size is one of them. And I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about it. Like, you know, in society now we have plus size models that's supposed to be all liberating, but in right. reality it's like, okay, but we still live our lives every day. We're not plus size models. So <laughs> right. this is something that you could do on a college campus to mm -hmm. literally like just embrace being plus size and having your plus size woman on your campus involved and feel more appreciated. So yeah, I think that this should definitely be on every campus and it's not just a social thing like, right it's literally a cause like during our practices and stuff like we would literally just like talk about it and get over our like insecurities <laughs> that we had of being mm -hmm. on stage and feeling weird and stuff like that 
So Samaj, like, uh, how do contents, how do the contestants like be a part of this pageant? Like, is there like a process they have to go through to pick like the, is it like a final 10, final top five, like? So when we come back for the spring semester, we mm -hmm. usually start off with having um, open calls for girls who are interested. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, it, it's up to six girls. Okay. Um, we try to get like five or six girls because mm -hmm. usually um, some people don't want to do it. So right. we go out, we dorm storm and tell people that you should really come out. Um, you definitely have to be a member of um, Black Active Mind, so that means coming to like three of our events um, per semester. Um, also, we do have a um, requir requirements. Basically, mm -hmm. we try to get girls who are like size ten and up. Okay. You know, that's the ideal mm -hmm. plus size woman. But yeah, those are the requirements. Uh, so, what are like some of the categories that the pageant will have? Um, so we're gonna open it with a opening dance that all of the girls have been practicing very hard for. Awesome. Um, and then they have their introductions and they tell the audience like who they are and stuff. Um, also we have a sleepwear scene which is like one of the most um, like, I don't know. Intimate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, people are anticipating the sleepwear scene because the girls get really creative with that. Mm -hmm. They can wear lingerie, they can wear um, pajamas, they can have a pajama party with their friends, but some of the girls do get a little risque. Okay. <laughs> um, and also we have a talent scene, so some girls may be dancing, mm -hmm. poetry. Um, Simone did a hair show last year, which was really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, just different talents. Um, so this sleepwear is the alternate instead of like the swimwear usually pageants have. Yeah. Right? Uh, so did you think that for like a confidence boost, it was better to give them sleepwear versus bathing suits? Yeah, because some of the girls, when they heard sleepwear, they're like, oh my God, what is, like, I don't own lingerie right. or anything. Or, and like you said, what some pageants, they have um, swimwear and people mm -hmm. don't own, you know, like uh, swim clothing and stuff. Right. So we did sleepwear and we tell them, like, put your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. So like I said, some girls do a pajama party. Um, some do do the lingerie. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I just feel like, you know, some people, they just mix it up. So mm -hmm. they can take their own spin and do it how they want to. So could you remember your sleepwear scene? Like, did you feel nervous? Was it like a confidence <laughs> boost for you? Like, what yeah. did you think in that moment? Um, so basically mine was, it wasn't like completely lingerie. It was more of like um, a corset type mm -hmm. of thing. So yeah, I was like really nervous. Like I did not want to do it. Right. I was on stage like, no, but. You know, it was, like, worth it. It was mm. fun. Like, right. it's a confidence boost because, like, people don't want to see plus-size women, mm. you know, showing skin or whatever. So it's just, like, well, deal with it. It's life. Right. We're women, too. Exactly. So. Uh, did you lend any pearls of wisdom to the this year's contestants? or? Yeah, like, um, I've been to some of their practices, and mm. I just tell them all the time, like, you know, just be happy and have fun. It, having fun is, like, the main thing. Like, don't focus on the competition. Just have fun and feel liberated. And... Some of them have texted me with questions and things, mm. just giving them advice and things like that. So, um, so like, what impact did this pageant have for you other than, like, being a confidence booster? Um, I mean, I've always pretty much, like, been confident in my mm -hmm. own skin, but the reason why I did the pageant was to, like, do something to make me not so, like, scared in mm -hmm. front of crowds. And I was just, like, I'm just going to do this and get over my, like, nerve-wracking ways or whatever so it really helped me like just be more social in general and like just get out there and do something cool despite all my like nervousness or whatever and then as far as like being plus size like I don't know I just felt really like happy like right. I'm standing up for something that is me so mm -hmm. yeah so how long has Bam been doing this pageant um, this is the ninth annual oh, wow. year for Miss Fat, so it's been going on for a pretty long time. Do you feel like now it's getting more acceptable? They're more like showcased because of like Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and all of that. Definitely, there's like I remember in 2014, maybe like my freshman mm -hmm. year, um, the crowd was not as big, and last year we got over 300 people to oh, come. Oh wow! So we're expecting that again this year, hopefully, mm -hmm. but. Social media has definitely helped us out. We've been putting promo videos out, promoting mm -hmm. like crazy, printing out flyers, just like doing as much as we can on social media and trying to get people mm -hmm. to, you know, see what this pageant is all about. So usually every pageant has a theme. So what's this year's theme for the pageant? So this year's theme is superheroes, but it's like the Shiro edition. Ooh, that's unique. So yeah, some of our contestants are Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. Superwoman, Catwoman, mm -hmm. Storm, Storm, oh. um, Nubia. Nubia is like a superhero as well. 
Uh, but awesome. the contestant's name is Nubia, too. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And then there's one more. Um, I don't know which one it is. Um, so... Oh, Black Widow. Oh, Black that's Widow. awesome. So you have all these, um, like, empowerful women showcasing themselves as awesome um, at show action figures, really, like these people. So that's a great way for them to, like, you know... They're also egos in the sense yeah. that they're not as confident as, but their superpower is. Yeah. That's awesome. So will BAM do more um, empowerment, like GIs or another pageant, just not called Miss Fat, but maybe something else? or um, Not pageant-based, but we have had a lot of empowerment this year. Mm -hmm. um, we've done stuff for Women's History Month. Um, we had a whole event based off of like women's mental health and spiritual health and stuff, which was really liberating for some of the girls who attended. Um, we also have just empowerment. Like We talk about topics that are like taboo in the, right. in the um, black community. So we talk about mental health a lot. We talk about sexual abuse in the black community mm. that people don't often talk about, um, living in daddyless homes, stuff like that. You know, just try to, we try to create a conversation that's safe for people to open up and feel like they can come back to us if they ever needed to. So. That's awesome. So if you guys can sum up the importance of this pageant in three words, each of you, what would it be? I would say self-love, um, confidence, and reflection. Okay. I would say um, beauty, beauty mm -hmm. um, perfection, and self-love, too. Um, so perfection is a unique one. So why did you pick perfection? Like, oftentimes we think, like, we're imperfect mm -hmm. because of the way we look. But I think everyone should be perfect. Like. Think of yourself as being perfect. You don't have to think of a societal uh, figure to be perfect. Mm. Like, you're perfect on your own. So. And on that note, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm Ashley Still for the Buffalo Review TV. The Buffalo Review TV, produced by Stripes Media. We welcome your feedback. If you have a question, comment, or story idea, you can email us at thebuffalorevue at gmail.com.